This is Professor Darf Seitz. This Java tutorial is part three on creating classes using the card game example. In the previous tutorial we looked at the card class. In this tutorial we'll be looking at the card hand class. Here's the source code for the card hand class which represents a hand of playing cards. You can add cards to the hand or you can play cards from the hand. Here are the repeated code values that are used internally, the deck values, face values, and suit values. We have our card hand class. The data members appear first. Private, the data is private in your classes. We're not going to talk about every piece of data here, but we do have a random class because there will be random number generation involved in this class. We have an object here called random of the random class. Also, internally, our cards in our hand will be in an array list of card objects. If you don't understand arrays or array list yet, again, don't worry about it. Just understand that you're being exposed to them and it's good to see them in their natural settings. It'll help you understand them when you do study them. So we have our cards in this collection that we can add to or take away from called an array list and that's the type of things in there. There are cards. Our first constructor, remember the constructors appear first with the methods, does nothing. We have an empty hand, nothing in it. And we need that because we have some add methods to add cards individually to a hand and you can only add them to an empty hand uh, to get started on a, on a card hand. Of course you can add them later as well. We have some other constructors. This one takes an integer array, those square brackets mean an array, a collection of integers, of deck values. So you pass in some deck values and you get a hand. We have a constructor here that takes a card array of cards, a collection of cards, card objects, which we studied in the last tutorial. There's another one that takes an array list of cards. So it's important to provide alternative constructors that would be convenient for various scenarios. Here is an add card that takes a card and adds it to the cards array list. Here's an add card that takes a deck value. A getter function, get size, returns the you know, cards array list size, the number of elements in that array list. Has deck value, we want to see if our hand has a given deck value in it. Has face value, does our hand have a given face value? Has suit, does it have a given suit? In this one, for example, we have an enhanced for loop that goes through the cards array list using this card variable of type card. Automatically, each item in the list is iterated, and all we have to do is refer to that card variable. So, we, for example, here, if card get suit value is equal to the suit value, then we know we found that suit and we return true. If we go through the whole loop and don't find anything, the next statement here returns false. Playing cards, we can play the card at a given index in the array list. And the indexes are zero relative, the zero for the first entry, one for the next. And it returns a card card that we've played and the card will be removed from the list. You can see here the remove. We can play a card given a deck value. We'll find it in our hand and play it. If we don't find it, we'll return no. So the caller of this function will need to be careful that they don't try to call it when there's nothing in our hand because They'll have to check for null then, not just try to use it. But to keep things simple, that's what we decide to do here. Play card random. That will take a random card out of the hand and play it. 
the two string functions, the regular one and a brief one to output what the hand has in it. Let's go ahead and run the test class that we created called here card hand test. It exercises the constructors and various methods in the in the hand. We'll look through those before we run it. So the constructors, the first constructor, the default constructor, just creates a an empty hand and then uses the add functions to add various cards to the hand using their deck values. The next constructor uses uh, an integer array of deck values. So we set up an integer array using their deck values. This is a royal flush array. It will correspond to the poker hand a royal flush. And then we use the constructor that takes an array of deck values and use the two string functions to display what it's going to look like. The next constructor uses a card array as input so we set up a card array called the little a as a prefix meaning an array array of diamonds that's just a name we can call it whatever we want sets up some cards and this will be all the diamonds. Notice that they're all sequential within their deck values. Instantiate with that constructor passing in that array. Our last constructor takes an array list. So we set up an array list of cards and we add the appropriate cards to it. And this will represent a full house. Then we have a test function to test the has cards. We set up a deck of twos and fours and do some checks in there. See if it has a suit suit number four which is if you get a hit it'll be a spade printed out saying yes there's a spade or it does not have a spade. We do a has face value and this is the face value here is what we have to put in there is a 6 in this case and actually this is supposed to be a face value here. Face values go from 2 to 14. It's not a deck value so I'm just going to change that right here in this test driver. We're going to be looking for a 7 and if we find it will have a 7, otherwise it will not have a 7. Go ahead and save that. And the thing we're testing here is just twos and fours. So we're not going to get a 7 anyway. <clears throat> Probably what I should do is change this to be a 4. Let's change this to be 4. Say it has a 4. So you can kind of see how when you're testing you will find some things you have to change. And make this a 4. And then we'll change it back to a 7 next time on the next run. So it should find a 4. Then we have uh, has deck value. Now deck values are specific cards. This is a 4 of diamonds. And the 52 is an ace of spades. So it'll be interesting when we run this test. We'll be looking for the 4 here. Or does not have a 4. Play sequence of cards. This is where we're playing cards. And we're going to set up a hand of diamonds. And then we're going to go through a loop. Here it says and play the first seven cards of the diamonds. So we go from zero through <clears throat> less than seven in our loop and we're going to play the card at. Card at uses the index in the hand which is zero relative. So we're going to be playing the first seven
cards out of the diamonds. When we get here, play random cards. This will play seven random cards out of the diamond's hand. It uses play random play card random and play specific cards. This test case is going to take the diamond's hand and play the jack, queen, and king of diamonds using the specific played card with the deck values. Let's go ahead and run this now and see what the output of this test driver is going to look like. Here's the output from the driver. First you can see the constructor, the default constructor says empty hand. Then we're going to add cards to the empty hand to make a straight. So we have a 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's a straight. There are some different suits there. That's the regular two string and here's the two string brief for that same five card straight. Then we use deck values uh, array constructor to construct a royal flush. Here's the long form, the regular two string and the short brief form here. Ten, jack, queen, king, and ace of hearts. It's a royal flush. Using a cards of type card array, we get all the diamonds, two through ace, and, and there are two printouts. A full house with the array list constructor, three kings and two tens. Here we're checking for the presence of certain cards, and we see that we did need to. Um, well, here's the we haven't checked yet. We're just showing the deck, not the deck, the the hand. So here's our hand. It's all the. Oh, I remember this was the twos and fours. Sorry, it's not the diamonds. So the hand is the twos and fours, two and four of clubs, two and four of diamonds, two and four of hearts, two and four of spades. That's the hand printed out and then we see has a spade and there it is has a four so we did correct that test driver there it needed to be <clears throat> the same number as the actual number it was not zero relative it was not a t deck value it was a face value and has a four of diamonds and does not have an ace of spades playing a sequence of cards here's the diamonds hand and we play the first seven cards, the first seven diamonds. And then after playing the first seven cards, here's what's left in the hand at that point when we show the hand. So then once they're played, they're taken out of the hand. We can look at as we play them and we can see what's left. Playing random cards, we play seven random cards. Here they are, ace, jack. <clears throat> You can see them there, the random cards that are played, and the hand after playing the seven cards, what's remaining. All the other cards, all the other diamonds. Play specific cards. Here we play the face cards, jack, queen, and king, and here's what's left. Let's go back to the code. We're back in the card hand class, just reviewing that it did have the data members, the constructors, the functions, comments throughout, getters, some has functions for checking for presence, functions to play cards, the two string functions. So this again gives you some ideas about creating your own classes. It's not expected that you understand everything in here, but seeing some Real classes is helpful for you to get ideas of how to do things. We're going to go back now and look at the class diagram before leaving this tutorial one more time. Here's the class diagram, the card hand that we just talked about. And in the <clears throat> next tutorial in this sequence, we'll be looking at the card deck.